Okay, and then there's that. Hello everyone, uh, welcome to Psalmody here, coming at you from Zion Lutheran Church in Maywood, New Jersey. I'm your host, Pastor Dan Sheets. Hope you're having a wonderful week, wonderful day today as we interpret the Word of God through one of the great books, Center of the Bible. It is no coincidence that it is at the center of the Bible as it's our heart. And that's why we go through it every week. We get to the heart of the matter. Today's psalm then, let's get right into it, is the five verses of Psalm 127. We're going to speak today, and I hope you can see the words on the screen as well. You can follow along as I uh, want to show you the divided uh, hash marks in the half verses so that we can build off of those endings to interpret each verse and then build on the whole theme of the psalm. Which, as I try to start out with telling you what type of psalm this is and then uh, a theme for it. Well, Psalm 127 is a community wisdom psalm. Wisdom community. Community wisdom. So this is a good teaching for us. Um, and community, once again, always means the uh, same thing as uh, communal, um, corporate, and um, church, right? Gathering together. Um, so this particular psalm was uh, most likely um, sang out, sung out in the congregation, a gathering of the people there, children of Israel. Um, and then what are they asking or what are they doing? What is the theme of this? Uh, the theme is blessing over the house. So blessing over the church, the house. Uh, but as we are going through this devotionally today, you can also look at it as um, blessing over your house. We're going to see how you can use this as a prayer. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll show you why here. So we go over Psalm 127. Let us begin. Unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. All right, so you see there, there's a labor, labor in vain. That's working, right? And awake in vain. Now, I'm sure you can agree that one of the biggest sicknesses, I call it, you can call it, in the world today is anxiety. And so being anxious um, is actually a sin. Um, I commit it every day. You probably commit it every day as well. Um, but being anxious is hard not to do. Um, so what do we do when we are? We work and we toil and we labor. Um, but if we stay awake in vain and anxiousness and anxiety, um, that's not building up the house of the Lord very well. That's not wisdom um, over blessings of the community, right? As a community, we don't want to suffer that, although if we do, we do it together. But we have here the Lord building the house. Um, and so no matter how hard we work, it is not by our works that we can uh, perform this blessing. It is his performance and the Lord watching over the city. That's where the house is, um, awake in vain. He does not um, stay awake in vain, but he's always awake. And therefore we can rest in peace. And that leads me into the second verse that I wanna show you something going on there. It is in vain that you rise up early and go late to rest, eating the bread of anxious toil. There's anxiousness once again. For he gives to his beloved sleep. Anxious toil? No. Beloved sleep is what the aim of the Lord is. Because he says, I'll stay awake for you tonight and every night and every day. And uh, so let me do that and not you. And I... Um, this is uh, points me always. I mean, I think I can find something every day 
that points me to uh, the beloved compline service that I like and I refer to so often um, because of the the end uh, the, the dismissal you know the nuke dimitis um, part of the compline that starts off this this antiphon part of the nuke dimitis that um, is just a beautiful phrase here that you know when it you can look that up in your Lutheran service book compline service in the end but that that phrase with uh, guide us waking O Lord and guard us sleeping that awake we may watch with Christ and asleep we may rest in peace wow you know pray that over your house every night when you're when you're resting in your bed um, this is how you combat this is how you petition for the um, the contrast and the positive over these things laboring in vain staying awake in vain anxious toil um, and having the opposite of beloved sleep you know you have to combat that and how better a way as the compline service is a prayer at the close of the day to uh, really take in those words guide us you know guide us waking oh lord when we're awake and guard us sleeping because we need to sleep our eyes are going to be closed why and it gives you the reason there and this is the whole crux of life that awake what are we doing when we're awake are we laboring and toiling in vain no we are simply watching with christ that's what we do he is doing all the work and we are simply watching what he does and then we can do what he has blessed us to do in in the opposite of vanity in the opposite of vainness we do it in working for the lord we do it in the positive and we fulfill our duties just simply because we're first and foremost watching with christ and when you do that at the end of the day this is how you dissipate the anxiousness the anxiety is that he is guarding you and so you rest in peace he is guarding over you and um so i was uh communicating um this week with uh beloved friends of mine um speaking over praying at night and uh you know i i like to to uh to tell you this little tidbit here and uh my confession that i was i was saying that i'm just terrible at, at, at praying a lot uh, praying at night especially um on my uh on my bed on my my rest place and uh my friends telling me you know it's, it takes them a while you know they got a lot of names to name uh children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren and on and on family members they like to name uh and they pray and so it takes a while to run through that and so for all of those uh out there like that i uh i recommend once again you know using this if you're like me <laughs> and you you just you just have a hard time uh praying along you know uh like that and trying to even remember all the names that you use this you know lord um not only myself and and uh you know if you're if you're married your your spouse there um to guide you when you're awake and guard you when you're asleep um, that you may watch with christ and sleep in peace but you can say everybody that's in your heart and mind all the family members you have the lord knows who they are um and uh if you, if you want to count your sheep those are your sheep under there um, name them but also um ask the lord here this is building up wisdom in your house and over your house which includes all your limbs of your house as we're going to get into here in uh, the next verses here about children and then stuff like that i don't want to go on and on and on about it but um i think this is just a, a good day that this came up psalm 127 that we can talk about these things awake we watch with christ this is just powerful words here to uh to know and memorize over your weeks and your days and especially your nights okay so let's go to 
the children part. Verse 3, Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord, the fruit of the womb, a reward. So we have from the Lord, a reward. Now, there's always these simple verses here in the Psalms that we don't have to even really expound upon too much because, like I said, they just explain themselves, a reward. If it's a reward, then you can thank the Lord for it because it's coming from Him. He's the only one who rewards us with any good thing. And so that's obvious, that, that verse right there. And, um, of course, it's speaking of children and fruit of the womb. And verse 4 is going to tell us why um, it's a reward from the Lord. So verse 4, like arrows in the hand of a warrior are the children of one's youth. So this is why they're a reward, can be considered a reward. Uh, so the half verse endings are of warrior and of one's youth. Obviously, you know, when you're, you're young, uh, you have more strength, you can do a lot more. Uh, kids and teenagers and and uh, young adults, you know, can uh, can go go back up to the beginning of this. Can can you know? Sometimes you could say work harder. Uh, maybe they can last longer. You know, they don't get as fatigued. Um, and I can attest to that. Uh, I'm, get, I'm getting old. You know, I sprained my wrist this past uh, week, uh, past couple of days here with the 28 inches of snow we got here in New Jersey. I broke two old snow shovels <laughs> i had to order a new one and uh, my wrist is is hurting i got a band on it here today and trying to trying to work it out but uh this is this is how the psalms work i mean i don't like i said i don't pick these um at random they're i'm just going by what's prescribed for the day our uh, church body and they always seem to fit what's going on through our week so there's at least for me you know um, and so youth, you know, is like being a warrior. You're strong. And, um, and so these are our heritages. Our reward is that we always have, uh, with us. We always pray to have with us the limbs, like I call them, the branches of our heritage, of our family tree, um, so that we can war together. And, um, what kind of battle is this war is it one like the world wars and you know weaponry and stuff like that no this is metaphor talk this is wisdom community talk of how you stay strong in the church in the community um, how you uh, be a warrior of the church militant with one another here because that's how you build the church in the in the first place with children right but Three, four, and five, and the last verse here build off each other, as we'll talk about the whole psalm does. But here we go with verse five. Blessed is the man who feels his quiver with them. He shall not be put to shame when he speaks with his enemies in the gate. So quiver, that's the pouch you put your arrows in if you're a bow and arrow hunter. We know the Robin Hood picture there going on. But blessed is the man who fills his quiver with them. So quiver with them. Them obviously is relating back to the to the children of one's youth, the fruit of the womb, uh, the heritage of the Lord. That's what them is. So the Lord's saying, those are your your arrows. Those are your weapons. Okay, to do what? Shall not be put to shame when he speaks with his enemies in the gate. So, you know, back then, usually... Um, if you were going to go to war, um, and you can see this in a lot of uh, movies when um, the two uh, armies there, they wait on the hill for each other and then they send the representative out and they talk it over, right? And they say, okay, this is what time we're going to start. They don't do this anymore in the modern age, but they used to actually have some organization here when they were going to go fight. And they would say, all right, we're going to be on the hill over there and then we're actually going to show our flag if you don't agree with these terms, and then we can start the battle. Kind of what happened back in the day too, in the Hebrew world, um, speaking with the enemy in the gate, hey, you really wanna go through with this or not? Uh, look who's behind me, I got the whole family here. Uh, you really wanna do this? You wanna really wanna to come over and uh, and tread on our, our foothold we have here? 
And so this is just the beautiful part of the psalm that ties the wisdom community theme together in the house, the blessing of the house, is when you have the warriors, uh, the family in the church together that, um, you know, you, you can, you, you heard the phrase, people say, oh yeah, well, you and what army? You know, and they tell you, and you say, well, I just need to do this or that. And they say, oh yeah, well, you and what army? And we step back and we look at our pews. <laughs> we look next to each other and we see the army. We see the, the brothers and sisters in Christ there with us. And that's how we become arrows, uh, arrows for the faith and arrows for the community at large um, to build up the Lord's house. So really being a warrior is building up the Lord's house as we um, work every day, as we go through every day in an imperfect world, uh, we need to build each other up and become warriors so that the enemy does not attack us at the gate of the Lord, the doors of the church. So there's so much going on here in five verses. Um, so this is all leads us to the watching with Christ during the day. And if you just stick to that, you can rest in peace and uh, you will not be put to shame. So back tracking here, as I like to do going from the bottom verse to the top, what do we have? Gate with them of one's youth, a reward from the Lord, beloved sleep, opposed to anxious toil, um, staying awake in vain, and laboring in vain. So the wrap around there is, like I said, um, blessing over your family, the prayers you cry out for them, um, that the Lord guard them and he guide them so that we all may watch with Christ. Um, and that is my send off for you today, uh, that you continue to watch with Christ. In the name of Jesus, have some more closing music here couple of seconds for you. Have a good day, folks.